It's been almost six months since Karen Allen has been in her Massachusetts textile design studio. Splitting her time between acting, directing, and her business, Karen Allen Fiber Arts, a boutique that sells her collection of vibrantly colored knitwear, this has been an unusually long time away. But things are set up to run smoothly when she's gone. And now that she's back, the never idle Allen has a lot of catching up to do. I decide when I'm coming to work and I decide when I'm leaving and I decide if I want to take a day off and there's just not many, not many jobs like that out there. That's a pretty good gig, actually. That kind of freedom is a far cry from the demands of a movie set. With an acting career that took off with her film debut in 1978's Animal House. Is this really what you're gonna do for the rest of your life? Well, what do you mean? I mean, hanging around with a bunch of animals, getting drunk every weekend. Alan's films, characters, and co-stars are legendary. Like playing the original indie girl, Marion Ravenwood, no, opposite you. Harrison Ford in Raiders of the Lost Ark. <laughs> Come back tomorrow. Because I said so, that's why. The young widow Jenny Hayden in the sci-fi classic Starman with Jeff Bridges, and Bill Murray's love interest in Scrooged. People used to make jokes because when I would go to work on a film, I would have a suitcase full of clothing and a suitcase full of yarn. And I would often set up like a little design studio in my trailers because, you, you know, you have an enormous amount of time to kill often when you work on a film. For Alan, knitting has always been an integral part of her life leading her when she was 17 to study textile and clothing design at the Fashion Institute of Technology in New York. Then the acting bug bit, and textile design took a back seat. I began to work professionally fairly quickly, which was quite lucky in, in some ways. So it was a very much learning by the seat of my pants experience. And that seat of the pants experience is what prepared her to do something far outside her life as an actor. She became an entrepreneur. I always thought at some point when things maybe settle down a little in my life, I would start a little textile company. The time to start that company came in 2002, when she decided to take time off from her acting career to raise her son, Nicholas. I would put things into a gallery and people were just buying them faster than I could make them. And I thought, well, this is a good sign. <laughs> The light bulb went on and I thought, well, you know, maybe I, this is encouraging. I felt encouraged. Two years after starting her design studio, Alan opened up a store now on Railroad Street in Great Barrington, Massachusetts. I actually have to do things like do buying trips and I have to really get into accounting and really look to see. It's important to see like how the store is doing and, you know, to make sure that we are able to pay our bills. As Alan's business became successful, it quickly became more complex. With several employees on the payroll, she soon realized the joy of working and designing her unique knitwear line was being replaced by stress and deadlines. We ended up going into the shows, clothing shows in New York, which becomes a very, very expensive proposition. So if you're spending that kind of money, then you really are under the pressure that you have to do well at the shows. And this is what gets to most designers. <laughs> takes them right down the tubes. After lots of trial and error and tinkering with the formula for making her business work, she got excited a few years ago by the prospect of outsourcing her production, especially since knitting her designs by machine was so physically demanding. I'm operating, I'm hand operating this machinery and sometimes in the course of a day, I'll move this carriage across these stainless steel needles four or 5,000 times. And it's like, at the end of the day, you're like, ow. You know, it's really like, ouch. And, and so the idea of somebody taking that off of my shoulders, literally off of my shoulders, was quite exciting at a certain point. When it turned out outsourcing wasn't an option because her designs were just too complex for mass production, she decided to take a radically different approach downsizing her studio and simplifying her business so she could do most of the production herself. Well, I kind of now have spared it back down so that it's basically just me and I don't go to the shows anymore. If somebody wants to have my stuff in their store, <laughs> they have to come to me. It means that, you know, it's it's sort of at zero growth in, in a way. Um, and I've 
I've learned to think that that's not such a bad thing. Her simpler business is now set up so it carries not only her line, but a bunch of other unique small batch designers as well, many of them local like herself. And with less pressure for constant growth, she's able to step away when she'd like to, to go back to acting. I can go off and do a project and I can come back to this and this will always be here. Um, this is a stable resource. It doesn't belong to anybody else. Nobody can take it away from me. Nobody can tell me I can't do it or that I didn't get the job or something like that.